Welcome to episode 100 of Sharing Life Lessons. This is season 10. We are one spirit, one soul, one world. And together we are creating a library of stories and life lessons. I am your host Tamita and I want to bring you stories. Because stories matter, stories inspire, stories teach and stories heal. I am pinching myself with disbelief and sheer delight. I always hoped and wished to say these beautiful words and today my podcasting wish has come true. So let me repeat these words. Listeners, welcome to the 100th episode of Sharing Life Lessons. This is an episode of celebrations, of gratitude, of paying my respects to those who inspired me physically and in spirit. Gratitude also to you, my listeners, in all 32 countries, to the many monthly subscribers who funded the creation and enhancements to Sharing Life Lessons, and to all the guests for their wisdom and their time. You made this experience an inspirational one for the listeners and for me. So to all of you, my gratitude for being the village of Sharing Life Lessons. I am starting this episode with a message to myself. Hamida. This is the 100th episode of Sharing Life Lessons. You dreamed it, and it happened. Be proud of yourself. You went from not knowing how to record a podcast to wanting to continually share knowledge on this platform without caring about the destination. You wanted to enjoy the journey, and you did. You enjoyed the journey thoroughly. At each of the 99 stops along this journey, you met a beautiful and unique soul to talk to, to indulge with, and to learn from. Some of them were famous authors like Neil Walsh, who authored a beautiful series of books titled Communications with God. To intuition, energy, life, health, career, and relationship coaches. To interesting people like you and me, who wanted to share their stories candidly, so that others could benefit from life lessons shared by them. These stories were from different genres, from a blind person who wanted to dissolve the myth of blindness, to a transvestite who proudly took us through his journey from being a lesbian to becoming who he really knew he was inside, a man named Liam, episode number 62. Liam said, we have to be true to ourselves. We need to live our life authentically. It will not always be easy. There will be fear of the unknown of not knowing what will be on the other side, and of some people rejecting us. But he said, we will have the happiness and joy of being unapologetically, authentically, fearlessly ourselves. Then there was a young lady who had planned her suicide and told us why she did not go through it and shared insights for those who are going through similar emotions. To topics like the power of thought, episodes 94 and 95, how to raise our vibration and remain there to Corporate Empathy, episode number 93, and Allowing Your Intuition to Guide You Every Day, episode number 46. The plethora of topics that we covered has offered me joy in bringing them to you and allowed me to gain so much knowledge from guests on the show. When I approach guests, not one, not one of them said that my knowledge is mine and I don't want to share it with you and your listeners. But instead, each one of them said, Here is what I know, and here are the tools your listeners can use if they find themselves in similar situations. Sharing our knowledge with others and learning from them is but one way to grow and evolve. I wish that we never stop learning, we never stop growing, and we never stop evolving. So, let's all continue telling our stories and sharing our life lessons. I have been contemplating for weeks about what I would say to all of you in this episode. But then I realized that if I must stay true to myself, like Liam suggested, then I just have to let go of all contemplation and planning and let the episode flow and take us wherever it wants to take us. This way, I can give full reign to my production assistant, the universe, and it will lead us to where we need to go. Thus, here I am in full submission to the universe. And I can't wait to see where we land with this 100th episode of Sharing Life Lessons. Richard Bach is my favorite author since I was a teenager. I am rereading one of my favorite books he wrote. It is called One. I know that I was drawn to read this book from my personal library after about 20 years or so for a reason. Let me read an excerpt for you from the book. 
Intuition is your guide. One level of you knows everything there is to know. Find that level. Ask for guidance. And trust you will be led wherever you most need to go. Try it. I heard the best definition of intuition from Victoria Shaw, an intuition coach who was my guest in episode number 46. She said, Intuition is that sense of knowing that we all have, that you don't know it in your brain, you don't know how you know it, it's not logical, it's not rational, it's not something you learned in school, but it's that visceral sense of knowing that is always right. It is always right. Your intuition is your connection back to your soul. When I heard this definition of intuition, I fell in love with it, not only for how it was described, but the idea of listening for my intuition to guide me to my inner self, my soul. Because intuition is that quiet little voice that continually guides us. Intuition is when you want to go right, but you get a feeling to go left. Or when you're driving, you're nudged to switch lanes. Or you're walking on the road and see a coffee shop. And although you don't want to drink coffee, you feel the urge to go in. That happened to me once. I followed my urge and met a school friend who I had not seen in over 25 years. And now, we are connected. The more we listen to it, the more that quiet voice talks to us. Think. Think of times when you were guided by your intuition, and appreciate that guidance, and ask for more of it, and it will be there for you anytime and every time you need it. You don't even need to summon it, because it is always there within you and for you. You only have to listen for it. Like Rumi, my favorite poet, said, Listen to silence. It has much to say. A few days ago, I was having an argument with my husband over a very petty matter. And I heard this inner voice tell me, Ground yourself, Hamida. This is not a battle you need to win. Let him have his way this time. I said to my inner voice, Okay, done. I calmed down. This inner voice is my intuition and I have realized that the guidance I am getting from it is honest, clear, always right and always valuable. And so I seek it more and more. I must confess, I am not the same Hamida as I was before I started serving you as Sharing Life Lessons host. Guests of Sharing Life Lessons have forced me to try to think deeper get to know myself more, and love myself again. I had forgotten how to do some of these things. I wish to continue sprinkling this episode with life lessons that enabled me to reconstruct myself, that had an impact on my life and forced me to grow and evolve. As always, I would like to begin this episode with a good thought. Most of the time, these positive beginnings are related to the topic. Today, we don't have a topic. But, instead, the quote is relevant to humanity as a whole. Amin Daya said in an enlightening discussion on the power of thought in episode number 95, he said, Remember that each one of us are empowered beings because collectively our roots are in the universal light of creation. We must not underestimate our role in creation to foster positive, powerful, profound change that is desperately needed. So, let's together be the beacon that raises the vibration of the world. End quote. If any of us are underestimating what difference an individual can make, then let's talk about individuals who have single-handedly made a difference. There is no big or small difference. There is no measurement for touching people's lives. Without talking about the atrocities that citizens of Ukraine are undergoing, Let's, for a change, learn of the goodness that coexists with these atrocities. You may have already read about this particular event of kindness. Kindness with a true sense to help even strangers during times of extreme need. The storyteller says, I came out of the bomb shelter and saw a car near the store. The keys were inside. I watched the car for two hours, waiting for the owner, but no one showed up. I took my family, got into the car and drove to Venezia where my relatives live. Then I found the phone number of the owner in the glove compartment and called him. I am sorry, I stole your car. I was saving my family. Thank goodness, came the response. 
don't worry, I have four cars. I took my family out in my SUV. I had refueled my other cars and left them in different places with the keys in and the phone number in the glove compartment. I received a call back from all four cars. Once there's peace, I hope we'll see each other. Stay safe. This story of kindness struck me for not only its selflessness, but also its out-of-the-box thinking. May we get many opportunities in life to help others and may we indulge in them selflessly and creatively. Albert Einstein said, Remember, it is every person's obligation to put back into the world at least the equivalent of what he or she takes out of it. I must repeat this. Albert Einstein said, Remember, it is every person's obligation to put back into the world at least the equivalent of what he or she takes out of it. Here is another story I read. It's about making a difference in others' lives in smaller ways. The story goes, I heard my mom asking our neighbor for some salt. We have salt at home, so I asked her why she was asking. She told me they don't have much money and they sometimes ask us for things, so I asked her for something small that wouldn't burden them. I want them to feel as if we needed them too. That way, it will be much easier for them to ask us for anything they need. Another example of not only selfless and creative kindness, but also humility. The mother in the story has creatively found a way to, on the one hand, give, but on the other hand, make sure that the receiver does not feel humiliated to ask for help when needed. Before I move on to the next life lesson that has changed me, I want to repeat what so many guests have said in several episodes. If you want to raise your energetic vibration, then give, 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 give. Give to those you know, but even to strangers. There is no meeting by chance. The fact that you have found a stranger in need means he or she was meant to get that help from you. So please don't deny them that help. Listeners, before we move on, I want to play for you this clip that really shook me. There was a forensic psychologist for the San Francisco Police Department, Jerome Motto. He did an interview in the New Yorker magazine. And he spoke about the fact that he used to do the forensic work when people would jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Unfortunately, it was very common. And he would have to prove there's no foul play. How did he do that? He was a psychologist, but the person had already jumped. You can't interview them exactly at that point. He would have to retrace their steps and prove that they were, God forbid, in a frame of mind where they wanted to take their own life. So basically, he used to go and look at people's history and their background to see what happened right before they jumped. So he said he got so used to this. He saw so many hundreds of jumpers that he became numb to it. He said there was one story that shook him and he could never shake it loose. He said one night they found a jumper and they found ID. They went back to the, uh, up where the guy lived. They found an address. They walk into the house. They found a note on the dresser. He said, I've seen that a hundred times, a note on a dresser, nothing new. But then I read the note and it completely shook me to my core. It said, I'm walking to the bridge now. If one person stops me on the way and says hello, I'm turning around and coming home. Do not underestimate the fact that you can be that person for somebody else. You can be the one who cares. You can be the one who reaches out to somebody else. To the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. I am thinking that this clip may have had the same impact on you as it had on me. You know my tagline in the beginning of every episode? I say we are all one spirit, one soul, one world. This clip magnifies that message. There is so much each of us can do to become that one world we all deserve. So let's do it, my friends. Let's just do it. As we speak of raising our vibration so that we can manifest our desires, Stephen Covey's quote shared by Stephanie Chick in episode number 45 has given me a very powerful tool to use daily. Stephen Covey said in his book, The Eighth Habit, between stimulus and response, there lies a space. 
And in that space lies our freedom to choose. I am repeating. Between stimulus and response, there lies a space. And in that space lies our freedom to choose. That space, listeners, is the most powerful place to be in. Before I heard this from Stephanie, my life was left to chance and on autopilot. Now I enter this space more often and as I enter it, I get the guidance from my inner self on how to handle the situation at hand and then I make a choice. Thus I have moved my life from living it by chance to living it by choice. The first step is to be aware of that space. The second is to consciously seek it and the last is to enter it and use it. Really, just enter it and use it. And all of this happens in seconds. If there is anyone who's listening and who wants to practice using this space with me, please reach out to me at sharinglifelessons101 at gmail.com and you and I can do this together. And the more we do it together, the better we get at it. Oh, there is so much to say and so many amazing life lessons to summarize and share. But instead, I request you to indulge in this rich library of 100 episodes to listen to those episodes that call out to you. Read the titles. And I promise you that if you are listening to that little voice within you, then some of the episodes will beg you to listen to them because there is something here for everyone. Before I end, I want to talk about what next. Many have wondered if I will continue publishing episodes and have asked me to not stop after the 100th episode. To them, I say, I don't want to stop. You as listeners and me as your host, we have not met over sharing life lessons by chance. We were meant to meet over this amazing platform. That being said, you know how authors finish a book, then they tie it in a nice bow and publish it, and then take a break to conceptualize their next book? I feel I need to do the same. This is Volume 1 of Sharing Life Lessons. I will come back with Volume 2. I don't know yet what form it will take. To bring you Volume 2, I need to complete this 100th episode, publish it, and then step back and see what my intuition brings to me for us. I believe that whatever form Volume 2 will take, it will be the right one and it will take us on an incredible journey together. So stay tuned. Please subscribe to Sharing Life Lessons Facebook page and YouTube channel. Links to both are in the show notes. This way you will get notified when I begin publishing Volume 2 in a month or so. Finally, let me leave you with two profound messages. The first one is called The Guest House. It is taken from selected poems by Rumi, translated by Coleman Parks from the Penguin Classics of 2004. The Guest House. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. So let me reiterate. You and I have not met by chance. Each of you and each of my guests have been sent to me as a guide from beyond. Another final message is from Doug Stevenson, my guest on episode number 85. Doug teaches the art of storytelling to corporate executives. These are my final sentiments for this 100th episode of Sharing Life Lessons. But in Doug's words, because I could not have said it better, Doug says, your story can change other people's lives. It does not have to be profound or dramatic. Each one of us has a life story and the lessons we learned from it, which we ought to pass along to other people. Doug says, find your stories, harvest the stories from your life and ask yourself, what have I learned? What can I pass along to someone? And then when there's that right moment in time, 
tell your story, share your story, share your life lessons. I am leaving for my dear listeners and my children and the world these 100 episodes of Sharing Life Lessons, which have taught me more than I could ever know that I would learn, have changed who I am as a person, and each of the 99 guests I interviewed have enriched me. They not only bravely and candidly shared of their personal stories, but they also shared wise life lessons. I leave you with all of them. You will find links for the podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify in the show notes of this episode. Please go to the library of 100 episodes, and when you read the titles, the right episode will call out to you. Remember me when you hear the episode and when you say to yourself, gosh, this is exactly what I needed to hear today. But then what? Then don't stop. Go ahead and tell your story and share your life lessons because we want to uplift each other and whoever we possibly can. Because remember, we are one spirit, one soul, one world. With love in my heart for you all and with too much gratitude for the universe for enabling me to get this far, I end this 100th episode. See you again for Volume 2 of Sharing Life Lessons. Again, we are one spirit, one soul, one world, and together we have created a library of 100 episodes of stories and life lessons. I am your host, Hamida, and I'm honored to have brought you these stories because stories matter. Stories inspire, stories teach, and stories heal. With warmth, love, and gratitude, be happy, be safe, and be well.